Hello. Welcome to Savvy Survivor. I'm Meredith Mendelson, co-founder of Savvy Survivor. This is a place for information and inspiration for those who've completed their cancer treatment and those who are living with cancer, their oncology providers, as well as their caregivers. Today, our guest is Toshiko Otomaki. Welcome to Savvy Survivor, Toshiko. And I'd like you to introduce yourself and tell us about your connection and experience with cancer survivorship. Okay. Um, hi, my name is Toshiko. Uh, I am a group exercise instructor, uh, personal trainer, and I also am a um, cancer exercise instructor. Um, I teach uh, uh, seniors and cancer survivors at various places like a local YMCA, uh, senior center, and hospitals. And I also do personal training uh, for the people who need one-on-one -on -one, uh, attention. So I started out um, teaching exercise uh, at the YMCA in 2002. I used to teach kickboxing and uh, boot camp, all those vigorous exercises to younger people. I really like that. But uh, 2006, I was diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And it started out with a really traumatic event. I ended up in the ICU for three days. And I stayed in the hospital for a while after that. And um, I was really shocked uh, to find out that I had cancer when I woke up from induced coma. And, but I was also um, really shocked to find, to see my muscles. Um, so I used to have a really beautiful muscle by teaching kickboxing and boot camp. So I was really proud of that. But in the hospital for a while uh, with um, not active at all, I lost uh, most of my muscles that I earned. And I couldn't even walk to the bathroom and I couldn't lift up my arms either. So uh, I didn't know anything about cancer treatment, cancer uh, side effects. Uh, so I didn't know anything until then. And uh, all I could do was crying. So my family brought the uh, computer to the hospital and um, I started to research about uh, cancer that I had and, and side effects and stuff like that. Um, and then I bump into a story about uh, exercise uh, did, uh, what exercise did for uh, cancer uh, treatment uh, recovery. So I was really uh, happy to find that out because um, exercise helped. And, and I, until then, I thought uh, you, you're supposed to be in bed while you're getting uh, cancer treatment because you're sick. But actually, it's totally opposite. And it's OK to be active. So I started to move. And I uh, started bending my knees and arms in the bed. And then um, I, after I came back uh, from the hospital, I start walking inside my living room for just two minutes. And then two minutes, and then after that, I start walking around the house. And then pretty soon went to stadium close by, and I walked uh, every day except chemo day. So it took me a while to regain strength, but um, Eventually, I went back teaching the exercise again. Yeah, wow. That's quite a story. Did anyone yeah. approach you from the hospital staff, you know, physical therapy or anyone else say, gosh, you know, it's really important that you exercise? Um, it was like almost uh, more than like 12, 13 years ago. Uh, they, they, made me walk in the hospital. Uh, PT came and made me walk because I was really, really weak. Uh, but uh, actually there's no, at that time, no information about 
exercise like we are now. Yeah. yeah. Right now, people talk about a lot. Right. Wow. So um, I know you started to talk about a little bit about your work now. Um, tell us more about how you support survivors with exercise. So 2009, uh, about three years after my diagnosis, I found out that our YMCA that I teach was planning to start an exercise program called Live Strong at the Y. Live Strong at the Y is, the, is a program for cancer survivors. It, it lasts 12 weeks and they meet twice a week and survivors can regain their strengths in that program. So I really, I was really happy to find that out uh, that, that kind of program is available for survivors. And I really wanted to facilitate that program because I knew how hard it is for survivors to start the exercise. And I thought I could help them out to, uh, by teaching them safe exercise. And so I asked why to let me facilitate. And I've been teaching this program for 10 years. And during 10 years, I started to teach other places like uh, hospitals and senior centers. And now I also go to survivorship event and then talk about how much exercise is important for survivors. And sometimes I show simple exercise so that they can start right away. Great. Um, what would you say are the um, things that cancer survivors should know about starting an exercise program if either they just finished, they finished five years ago, you know, what's the way for them to get started? Yeah, so important thing to remember is um, exercise is a medicine and uh, strong body equal strong mind. As you get stronger, you'll, you get more confident. And, uh, but everybody has to remember type of exercise that you should do is different depending on where you are, like you said. For the people who uh, just get out from the hospital, like walking in the living room two minutes, just like me, is a good exercise. And people who are still in the treatment, uh, their immune system is really low. So house chore is really good exercise. And many people think exercise, I mean, house chore is not exercise, but it's really, really good exercise. And then if you get a little bit stronger, um, you can go out and take a walk and then you can take, start taking a group exercise. But I think it's really important thing is it's okay to start small and don't postpone it because some people say, I'm gonna do something when I get a little bit more stronger. Um, if you don't do anything, you don't get stronger. So you have to start somewhere. You start now where you are. So it's okay to just start with a two minutes of walk and then uh, you, you get stronger a little bit by little bit. And also I wanna tell people who used to work out a lot or people who um, used to be an athlete, or young survivors tend to start out with the exact same intensity of exercise that they used to do when getting injured. Um, so you don't want to find out part of your body is still really weak by getting injured. So you got to start small and uh, very low because you have to remember your body went through a lot. Uh, your body is a little bit different from uh, the before your diagnosis. So uh, just listen to your body and be patient is really important. Yeah, that sounds like great advice. Mm -hmm. How about advice for the providers who are taking care of people? You know, it's a very stressful environment today. So lots of people are burning out. How can they get in a little exercise every day or, or frequently? Any tips for them? 
um, so you you um, so uh, it's really caregivers and families. It's really good idea to participate in the uh, survivorship program and stuff like that with the survivors. And it's a good idea if the uh, exercise program let them in, you should go there and just maybe observe or how they're doing. Uh, also, it's really um, important to to find a really uh, reliable website and stuff like that and learn from there. Mm -hmm. So um, I want uh, caregivers and providers to know uh, survivors need more help after, uh, even after uh, treatment. Uh, I mean, more, more uh, help after treatment because during the treatment, survivors are uh, fighting with the cancer as a team. Um, doctors, nurses, uh, caregivers, family, you fight cancer with as a team, but after you get the remission, after you uh, finish treatment, you kind of feel like uh, you're happy, but you feel like you're really lonely because everybody start going back to normal life and you don't go see doctor that often anymore. And you, the survivor themselves, feel like uh, they uh, they need to go get back to normal. But actually, their bodies are not normal at all. Uh, they're still in pain, uh, lymphedema, all kinds of side effects. Some survivors still have a side effect five years, 10 years, 15 years. Uh, but they feel like they need to act normal. So uh, that's why I really feel um, good survivorship program is necessary for them. And uh, caregivers, no, uh, I'm sorry, providers and nurses, uh, primary care providers um, should ask them, uh, the patient, uh, about uh, how they're doing, uh, even though they're, they're treatment was 10 years, 15 years before, they, they might still uh, suffering from, from those side effects. So important, thank you for mentioning that. What kinds of resources might you recommend for people um, to uh, investigate you know, yeah. online or in person? Um, I think uh, American Cancer Society's um, website is really informative and lots and lots of information not only for survivors, caregivers, providers, lots of uh, articles and studies. So just going there, uh, it's really lots and lots of information. I really feel that site is good. Also, a Livestrong, a Livestrong site is good. Um, what else? Uh, and also, I think I feel like uh, it's really a good site is um, Fred Hutchinson's survivorship program website. They have a survivorship event uh, at least twice a year, and they put all the um, uh, lectures and stuff in in that site, and you can even see the videos uh, in there. So it's really fun to. Uh, research in there and reliable so reliable is more and most important uh, you can see many stories success stories and stuff in the website but you have to remember that you always investigate if the information is correct or not oh well, yeah very important and we'll have a list of the resources that you've suggested plus others um, along wow. the on the Savvy mm -hmm. Survivor website well, thank you so very much for sharing your wisdom with us about being active and uh, specifically for survivors. We so appreciate it. You're welcome and thanks for having me. Oh, you are so welcome.